Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Charles Abels, local photographer in and around Prescott Valley, Arizona. I hope you enjoy this presentation. film with calf and all because that's what I want to do here in this episode is show you how I develop my rolls of film using calf and all or a particular recipe here the the recipe that I plan to use is calf and all Delta standard it's a very simple recipe and it's what I use when I develop Kodak Tri-X 400 film which I happen to have here in a developing tank. It's ready to go. In addition to that, what I want to show you is, you'll notice I have two books right here. This is a copy of my recipes and cookbooks, and this is my logbook where I record all the films that I developed. Kind of keep a tracking record to see how well things went when I developed other films. This is on standby because I'm going to have to record the temperature, but that'll be in a few minutes. This is my recipe book. Now I have it out, so I'm going to use it to help me out. Granted, I developed lots of rolls of film, but as the old saying goes, why commit to memory something I could look up? So I'm going to refer to this cookbook, or yeah, the Caffinol cookbook here, to make my recipe as I always do. Before we go into the the actual process of uh, mixing the ingredients together, I want everybody here to understand that the recipe that I use is one that I I don't want to necessarily say I developed it, but I fine-tuned it and fine-honed it for my needs and my specification. I'm a firm believer that no matter where you're at in the world, instant coffee will have different uh, variations of caffeine in it. I guess the best way I can explain it. Uh, Arm & Hammer washing soda, uh, maybe a different brand of washing soda. Uh, even the vitamin C powder that I use may be different. So in other words, around the world, it may be different. You may have to explore and find that recipe that helps you out with your film depending on what you use. Now I generally use Kodak. Kodak T-Max 100, 400, Kodak's Tri-X 400, so I have different recipes for each of those films. In the last presentation that I done, I, I had a young man, a friend of mine, commented on me that during this whole process I should be wearing nitrided gloves. And so I'm going to share with you that when you start to develop your own film, even if it is with calf and all, throughout the whole process from start to finish, when you give it a final wash, wear the nitrided gloves. Alright, to begin the recipe, what I generally do is I use distilled water. I find that I prefer that as opposed to tap water here, but I do use tap water. The distilled water I use on two occasions when developing film, making my recipe and the final wash. And what I do is I'll pour in approximately a little over 200 milliliters in there when I start to brew up my recipe. With the coffee filter, 
and a scale, I get it turned on, and I put on the coffee filter, because it's going to take in the weight, I'm going to tar it, hit the tar button, and then it's zeroed. The first thing that I mix in here, the first thing that I use in here, is I use the Arm & Hammer baking soda. And in this particular recipe, it takes 9.6 grams of it. Let me just make sure, 9.6 grams. Somewhere in here, I got a little spoon amount, 9.6 milliliter, or I'm sorry, 9.6 grams. 9.6 grams, and then I take the coffee filter with the washing soda, and I pour it in there. And then once you pour it in there immediately, grab the stirring, because in my experience, I found that with the uh, washing soda, it does have a tendency to harden up in there with the water even. I find it interesting. But you just stir the dickens out of it. Make sure that every bit of the granular is dissolved as much as you can. The next ingredient is the vitamin C powder. And I believe, if I recall rightly, it's four grams of the vitamin C powder. Now make sure that when you put this back on, you retar it. I just like to do that. So that way I've made sure that it's at a zero before I pour in the next ingredient. And we got four grams to put into the, the beaker and mix that together. And again, ensure that the ingredients are thoroughly dissolved in the water. All right, once you're done with that, the next ingredient, retar the next ingredient. The final ingredient is 18 grams of instant coffee. And there we go, 18 grams. Pour that into your mixture. Store that until it's completely thoroughly dissolved. All right, then once, once you're happy with it, here comes the one of the most critical parts. What is the temperature of that mixture? Now they tell you, or they say to you, that you need to have this mixture at about 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I do, I do believe that that's important. I could say right here, right now, the ambient temperature is just over 20 degrees Celsius, so we're going to stick that in there. And we're going to find out where we're at exactly. Now so far, it's looking pretty good. So, the water temperature along with the mixture seems to be right there at 20.2 degrees Celsius. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of water here. All right, I'm quite happy with that. We're down to 19.6 degrees. And now we're down to 19.3 degrees Celsius. I'm at 400 milliliters. That's what I use to make my caffeinol recipe. 400 milliliters to fill up that development tank or to put into that development tank. And right now as it stands we're at 19.5 degrees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start the timer because what I want it to do is I want to sit there and let it settle and let all the micro bubbles work out. And generally I give that five minutes. And that is the Caffeinol recipe, Caffeinol Delta Standard for the Kodak Tri-X 400 film. Generally, while the recipe sits, having the micro bubble settle down and everything else settle down, I generally do a side chores in order to preparate or in order to prepare for the other various phases of the development project. So as an example, this right here is my fixer. This is a, uh, an Ilford 
rapid fixer. I offhand don't recall, oh, what do they call that, where you have a mixture base. But it's on the Ilford fixer. This is a one liter bottle. So I calculate accordingly when I make the uh, fixer for uh, my film development. And so what I do is I'll pour into my glass beaker 400 milliliters of the fixer. And I stick the funnel over there. And generally while I'm in the process, I like to cover it up. I generally practice that primarily because, well, let's not, let's face it, I live in Arizona, I live in an old home, it can get a bit dusty. So I turn the furnace off, so that way when it comes on, it doesn't blow dust around in here, out there, or wherever. So I try to keep the dust at a bare bone minimum, if possible. This is Kodak Professional Photo Flow 200. This is the last process that you use. But I prep it up, and you might say it's like a bit of soap. I have here, I guess you'd call this a hypodermic. I don't really know what the technical term is, but nevertheless I use this because when I put it in there, I want two, two, two milliliters. And so I make sure I got my two milliliters and put it into this beaker. Cap it off and then put it away. And then I grab my distilled water and I pour in there 400 milliliters of distilled water. Now, this particular process here, we'll just call it soap. I use distilled water on that and I use the still water on the recipe, but if you were to use tap water throughout the process, what you run the risk of is streaks on the negative. Now what I do is I develop caffeinol with the still water, then I do the wash with tap water, so we have the still water, tap water for the wash, and then three revolutions in the final wash with the tap water and the final last wash that you do is with your soapy mixture here and then I use this tweezer squeegee I guess you'd call it but I use this that once I'm done with the rinse the final rinse with the soap I then squeegee the negative thus pretty much eliminating any chance of any streaks that you may get just using tap water. Our water here, our tap water here, is pretty heavily laden with minerals, so that's why I like to use the distill in the recipe and the distill in the final wash, and then when I go ahead and, and squeegee it, uh, I'm fundamentally squeegeeing it because I use tap water during the washing period. So we'll go through the process here. Covered up my final wash soaps. And right now, it looks like we are ready to go. The caffeinol is at a temperature of 19.7. Let me note that in my, my log book here. 19.7 degrees. That's pretty good because what you try to shoot for is a temperature of 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or excuse me, 20 degrees Celsius. Remember, 20 degrees Celsius equates out to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I try to shoot for anything between 19 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius when I'm ready to pour it into the developing tank. So I'm at 19.7 degrees Celsius. Note it in the log book and now we're ready to rock and roll. All right. Are you ready? I am. So at that time you pop the lid off your developing tank, you take your caffeinol and you pour it into the developing tank. The 
then you grab the lid, you pump the lid into there, secure the lid on top, and then you set your timer. Now this is a regular kitchen timer. It works well, and this process is going to take 12 minutes, so that's when I'm plugging in there, 12 minutes. And then once I get it up to there, we are ready to rock and roll. The first minute, the first minute is you invert the tank 10 times. And generally I just, out of habit, tap the lid lightly. And then every minute afterwards, you invert three times. So if you notice, I'm using the left hand now. This is something you don't have to do. This is just a habit that I developed. I figured it helps mix it up if I alternate directions with it. Seems to work out for me. So on one round I do it with the right hand, on the other round I do it with the left hand. Of course by the end of the process I generally forget which hand, but you know, it's old age. Still waiting. And there it is. All right, now we're ready to pour out the caffeinol. And the next step is going to be the wash. This is where you use your tap water. Use cold tap water. Fill up your tank. Batten down the lid. And then invert six times. Once you do that, you do this for a total of three times. That was round number one. And this will be the last wash. For this round. All right. Pour that out. Then this is where you add your fixer. 400 milliliters of fixers. Okay, once you're done with that, set your kitchen clock here to five minutes. And then start it. And then you just invert three times for this process. All right, that's the final invert with the fixer. We don't have all that long now. Now, what you can do with the fixer, it is reusable. My general guideline is 12 to 15 times. had not failed me yet, but there are ways to test your fixer out. We might talk about that later on but you can check the strength of your fixers. And so I pour it back into the beaker and eventually I'll pour it back at the uh, end of the bottle so you can reuse the fixer without a problem. Now, the final rinse. Cold tap water again. And we're gonna do the following inverts, we're going to do it by three, three times, six times, 12 times, and the last final rinse will be 24 times inverting. So we're going to start with the final wash. Pour it out, and then fill it up. The next one is going to be six times. Okay, 
Okay, the next one here is 12 times. All right, and the last wash. And then we're about ready to wrap this up. The last wash, this is this 400 milliliter of distilled water with uh, the uh, Kodak PhotoFlow 200 mixed into there. It's fundamentally, I can best describe it as like a soapy mixture. Now ordinarily I keep the beaker out because when I am done, I will pour that back into the beaker and soak this up a little bit before I run the tweezers, squeegee tweezers down the length of the negative. All right, after you invert the final wash with the photo flow, what I generally do is I put my squeegee tweezers in there. I don't know if you'll see the bubbles just come pouring out of here. But here's what it looks like on the final wash. You see all that soapy concoction in there? Yeah. Pour that into the back end of the beaker. Because right now we're getting ready to uh, do the final process here. What I ordinarily do is I'll take the developing tank with the first lid in there in place, flip it over upside down into the sink to allow any soapy water to drain out of there. All right, I think I done left the developing tank to drain. The rest of the uh, recipe with the uh, photo flow and distilled water. And now we're going to see if we have pictures. Now ordinarily what I do is I take a rag like this before I do anything. And with the tweezers, I generally like to squeeze on the rag and clean anything that might be on there. So that way it doesn't add streaks when I get ready to dry the film. And get it all soapied up. Now at the end of the process you'll have negative clips. This one does not have the lead weight. This one has the lead weight. The one with the lead weight is what you're going to use first. When you take the reel or the negative off the reel. Now what I like to do is I like to come over here to the tub and kind of shake off any excess that might be on the negatives and on the reels. But there we are. So are you ready? Let's check it out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Guess what, guys? I see negative. I see photos. Well, I see images, I should say. Oh, my goodness gracious. Look at that. But we do have images. Look at that. Is that not wicked? All right. Then we're going to take our squeegee here. I go over to the bathtub and then that's when I squeegee off any excess photo flow water. I do it a couple of times and I just squeegee it lightly. I am excited. And then once you do that, you can flip it over, lead weights on the bottom. You grab the other negative clip here, stick it on, and then you are done. The negative, the images on here looks phenomenally awesome. And then I let it out to dry. Now drying time will vary. I'll generally at a minimum 
let it dry for a couple of hours, two hours. They do, depending on the type of film you use, they do have a tendency to curl up. I'm taking these off finally. They do have a tendency to curl up inward, which for me creates a bit of a problem when it comes to scanning. So that's the process. Instant coffee with certain ingredients can develop a roll of black and white film. I just love it. And I hope you do too if you consider developing your own film. Let me throw in a couple of, uh, I don't want to say caveat, but let me throw in a couple of things. First thing is, down below I will have, again, the Caffeinol cookbook link down below. This is really for me is a little bit of extreme and process. I, I try to make sure that the negatives come out good and the photos that I scan come out good. So it's a little bit long drawn out scales, photo flow, distill water for the uh, recipe, distill water for the final wash and photo flow tap water, cold, you know, so it's, my process is probably a bit long and drawn out, but hey, I like it, and I'm going to stick with it. So then, what I'm going to say, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you give it some serious thought to develop your own film. It is really fun. Uh, yes, it's a bit of a time consumer, but the, the rewards are phenomenal. I mean, I feel very, very much successful with that role. Very good with it. Having said that, and without further ado, don't forget to subscribe down below if, if you like my channel. I appreciate it. And until next time, we'll catch you later.